Scoliosis Explained, what are the causes, symptoms, and treatments? There are different types of scoliosis, and this is determined by the conditions underlying cause. 80% of diagnosed cases are something called idiopathic scoliosis, and this is where there's no clear associated single cause with the development of scoliosis in the person. These are considered to be normal, healthy people with nothing else, but for some reason, they're developing a scoliosis. With the other remaining percent, there are associated known causes. The first type is something called neuromuscular scoliosis. And neuromuscular scoliosis is when there's a presence of a larger neuromuscular condition like spina bifida, muscular dystrophy, cerebral palsy, which can affect the muscular system of the body, the ligament system of the body, or the neurological system of the body, which can be associated with the causation of the scoliosis. The second type is something called congenital scoliosis, and this is where a patient is, is born with scoliosis. In utero, one of the bones of the spine is malformed into something called a hemivertebra, and this mal-shaped vertebra is asymmetrical, which can lead to a scoliosis developing. We believe this affects one of 10,000 babies, so it's extremely rare. Degenerative scoliosis is the last type, and this is caused when the spine deteriorates asymmetrically and rapidly in a certain area. And this spinal degeneration is so extensive that it can cause a curvature to occur at that area of degeneration. And this is typically diagnosed in patients over the age of 50. Now, the symptoms associated with scoliosis are different based upon age. In children, the con condition's main symptom is posture. It's just postural changes. And we see postural changes in the shoulders and in the hips and in the rib arches or in the waist. And this is typically the earliest sign is gonna be uneven shoulders, uneven hips, uneven rib arching. And in this, even though this is putting uneven forces throughout the body, most patients or children do not feel pain or discomfort or malfunction. And this can be sometimes um, a false sense of security because a lot of parents may not take a posture asymmetry seriously because the patient's not experiencing any type of pain or discomfort. We don't expect kids to feel pain or discomfort while they're growing and developing with scoliosis because for that exact reason, they're growing and developing around the scoliosis. However, the main symptom in adult patients is pain. Even though they could have um, posture asymmetry as well, most adult patients seek out treatment because now scoliosis has become painful. And this is because when the curves progress in the adult form, it starts to compress. And as the spine compresses, it can start pressing on nerves and muscles and tissues. And as it causes this, it causes scoliosis-related pain. And even though the postural changes could still affect adults, pain by far is the main symptom that brings the adult patients in for scoliosis uh, diagnosis and treatment. The good news is that scoliosis is treatable. Even though scoliosis is a progressive disorder, we know it progresses in adolescence, has a chance of progressing rapidly during prepubescent growth spurts, and then progresses slowly in the adult form and starts increasing its rate of progression in later stage life, that we know curves can be treatable. And in fact, our approach is that the sooner you treat scoliosis, the better outcome and the better result you're gonna have long-term. There are two main approaches to treating scoliosis, and one is surgical approaches, and the other is non-surgical. Surgical approaches is what I tend to fall into the traditional approach to scoliosis, and traditional approaches tends to funnel patients to the uh, invasive spinal fusion because very little is done to treat scoliosis when it's mild or moderate. And normally curves are weighted, weighted until they become severe or start causing severe pain and dysfunction in the adult stage. And then they're normally their recommended surgery. So these uh, traditional approaches have very little to do that's non-surgical. The only patient that's treated non-surgically for the scoliosis in this approach is going to be the adolescent that's rapidly growing. And the, the, the best option is a traditional squeezing style brace that's trying to stop scoliosis progression during puberty. Outside of that, no other patient is actually treated in this range in, or in this approach until it becomes severe, and that's when they start considering spinal surgery. If an adult is experiencing pain in this model, they'll normally treat the pain with injections or medications or something along those lines, but the curve itself is still left untreated.
Now, scoliosis can be treated without surgery, and this is what I call a non-surgical approach. And non-surgical approaches are, tend to be more proactive, and they're more proactive in treating a scoliosis closer to the time of diagnosis because we know smaller curves and younger patients always respond better than the same patient when they're older and have a bigger curve. So across the board, younger patients, smaller curves respond better. I like to call these proactive approaches more conservative or more chiropractic centered because the goal of most chiropractic care is to address the cause and by reducing what's causing the problem. And the way we do that is by actually reducing the size of curve because the number one thing that leads to curve progression or how much a curve is going to progress is the size of curve. So a 20 degree curve is less likely to progress at the same rate than a 30 and a 30 less likely than a 40 and a 40 less likely than a 50. So if you, we can address the size of the curve, that's the number one factor that leads to progression. As curves get bigger, they're more likely to get bigger. So the way you reduce a curve in a conservative treatment model without surgery is by combining multiple treatment disciplines in a very specific manner to impact the scoliosis on, on many levels. Chiropractic care obviously is essential in reducing the size of the curve through something we call chiropractic structural adjusting. And this is using instruments and drop tables and sometimes your hands to help move the spine into a straighter position. Traditional physical therapy is normally just used to help increase flexibility or strength in a patient that has an injury. Structural physical therapy is used and it uses machines and therapy and rehabilitation and exercises to help move the spine into a straighter position. So the goal is more than just muscle strength or muscle flexibility or, or joint flexibility. The goal is structural change to make the spine actually straighter. Corrective bracing can be used in this approach as well. Traditional braces, like I mentioned, are just squeezing to try to slow down progression during LS and growth spurts. Corrective bracing in this approach is to help push the spine into a straighter position. And the last thing is home rehabilitation. Most home rehabilitation involves core strengthening to help patients that have injured or weak muscles, where scoliosis rehabilitation is designed in an asymmetrical manner to help the patient push put their body in a corrected position relative to their curve. So all of these things are structurally based to help deliver a better or a smaller scoliosis or better alignment of the spine. And the last thing I'd like to mention is the dose of treatment. Very often, traditional conservative approaches are low dose, long duration, to do a little bit of care over a very long time to help assist somebody who's gone through an injury. Scoliosis, care to help reduce a curve typically needs to be the opposite of that. It needs to be high dose, short duration treatment to reduce the curve quickly and then stabilize it with home therapy and home rehab. Here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we have treated patients conservatively with non-surgical treatment approaches that strive to preserve as much as the spinal integrity as possible and as much function as possible, as opposed to letting the curves just become se severe enough to where they qualify for surgery and then using rods and screws to fuse the spine together, which is a non-functional approach. The goal is more function at the end of our treatment, not less function. The most important thing to understand about scoliosis treatment is that the sooner you treat scoliosis, typically means the better the result, even though you're not may not be experiencing a lot of pain or a lot of symptoms as a result of it, because mild curves can always become moderate and moderate curves can always become severe. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.